Welcome to the Cannabis Podcast. I'm your host, Brett David Stelter, and today I want to talk about five tips to help you quit smoking weed. Now, I'm gearing up for a tolerance break in January. I do dry January every year to reset my brain, reset my body, and just to kind of blast off into the new year with a fresh look, with a fresh outlook. Now, this isn't for everybody, but I don't drink. So cannabis is kind of like my vice. So to do dry January, I have to not smoke or consume. So what I do in order to gear up, and I've done this every year for the last 10 years, and I've done it no problem. The first week or two is, is very tough. The first couple of days, you just want to smoke and, and all that stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you five ways to help kick that habit and that trigger that makes you want to smoke, whether it's permanently you want to quit smoking or just take a tolerance break. So here we go. Tip number one. This is very important. You have to first and foremost ask yourself, why are you consuming cannabis? Is it for a medical reason? Cancer, glaucoma, arthritis, inflammation, etc. Or is it recreational? Is it just for fun on the weekends? Do you smoke when you wake up, lunch, and dinner? And if you do, why? Why are you smoking that much? You have to really ask yourself. You have to go within and ask yourself why you're using this substance in order to realize that you're able to live without it. Go within to live without. That's tip number one. Tip number two. Throw out all the paraphernalia in your place, whether you're in a house or an apartment. Throw out your bongs, your pipes, your joints, your papers, your lighters, anything that reminds you of smoking cannabis or makes you want to smoke cannabis, throw it out. Get rid of it. Start over. Start fresh. Now, I know we might have some sentimental glass pieces and things like that. That's fine. Tuck them away. Wrap them around in some shirts. Tuck them away. Put them in the closet for at least 30 days. Get everything out of your sight that reminds you of wanting to smoke. It really helps. Out of sight, out of mind. Number three, develop different habits and hobbies. So you have to substitute things for what you're doing. A lot of people just like to smoke the oral fixation, and that's a habit. That's why they go to nicotine vapes to try to quit smoking weed, but the nicotine vapes are actually worse for you than weed. So there's a couple things that you can do that I do as a filmmaker, musician, artist, writer, etc. What I do is I read a lot to occupy my brain so that you're on a train of thought that's not leading you into wanting to smoke. I play music. I learn new things. Learn new skills is the biggest thing I can I can tell you to do. Now, you might get frustrated, but if you're learning a new skill for fun, why would you get frustrated? You're just learning for fun. You know, you're not going to be a you know, professional something that, I mean, you might be. That would be cool if you developed a new skill at 30-something, 40-something, 50, however old you are, and then became a pro at that because you quit smoking weed. That'd be cool. Now, I love cannabis, but there are times for breaks, and there are times people need to dial it back a little bit. Now, it's not necessarily easy to quit cold turkey. But if you're going to do cold turkey, do cold turkey. But you can also take a month off or quit with parameters. So, for example, tell yourself, I cannot smoke except on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. That's it. And stick to it. You have to hold yourself accountable. Or say, if I smoke a lot during the day, I can only smoke when I'm at home after I get everything done, including my work. Reward yourself with that, and you'll realize you're using it as a crutch rather than a reward. But that's an aside. Tip number four, work out, go to the gym, walk, go outside in nature, leave your phone at home if you go on a walk in nature, because you're going to want to fidget, you're going to want, you're going to, it's, it's anxiety. Smoking calms anxiety. So 
ironically, the more you smoke because you think you have anxiety, the more you get anxiety about getting ready to smoke. It's a, it's a vicious circle. So if you just go outside on a walk every morning, leave your phone every morning, 7, 8 o'clock, whenever, 6 o'clock, whenever you wake up, go for a little short walk without your phone. Look around, take everything in, say your affirmations and your blessings, and then go about your day. You should be at a little bit more of a peaceful state of mind other than waking up anxious and getting on your phone. And then that triggers, oh, I, I want to smoke. I got to smoke, things like that. I promise. Little micro changes are going to lead to macro changes in your life, especially with your consumption habits, which this is about. And tip number five, but not the last one, is to make sure you stay hydrated and stay positive. I know it's going to be pretty tough the first couple of days. You're going, oh my God, especially if somebody cuts you off in traffic or you get yelled at at your boss or girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. You're going to want to just go and smoke and say, you know what? hell with it. I'm just going to go smoke. I don't even care. That's the point of taking a break is to challenge yourself to learn how to deal with those situations and cope with those situations without a crutch, without a substance to use it. Alcohol is the same thing or any other drug. I'm specifically talking about cannabis though. Now there are other things you can do such as smokable CBD. CBD doesn't get you high. Now there are little cigarettes that I'll show later. There's little cigarettes with filters that are just CBD. They don't get you high. No THC, not THCA or Delta 8 or any of that. I'm talking pure CBD. That gives you that oral fixation. They burn really slow. And after it, your craving's kind of gone and you're not stoned. And CBD actually probably helps your inflammation or helps your body in some way. So those are just five quick tips for you to take a dry month off or to quit in its entirety. And you notice, I'm sure you've seen people in your life where you say, oh my gosh, so-and-so is living at the gym or so-and-so is painting a lot. You have no idea why they're going so hard at that new hobby. Maybe there's a death in the family. Maybe they're depressed. Maybe they're trying to kick a habit such as nicotine or vaping or cannabis. So let's be patient and let's have some empathy with people and not make fun of people for what they're doing, especially if you're a 30, 40 year old trying to learn a new skill publicly. Kind of embarrassing, you know, if, if it's like going back to school at 30 or 40 and you're looking around and everyone's 18 or 20, you feel kind of out of place. So let's be a little bit more uh, community minded when people are all struggling because you don't know what people are dealing with especially mentally. Kicking cannabis is all mental. I would say 99% mental. 99% of the time, you don't need, if it's just recreational, if it's just recreational. I'm not talking medicinal for MS, arthritis, glaucoma, pain, etc., cancer, not, none of that. 99% of the time, if you're using cannabis recreationally, if you use it too much, it's going to morph into medical. So you have to be mindful of when your recreational use morphs into medicinal use. And when your medicinal use came from recreational use, so now it's constant, that's when you need to take a break or quit. There's no withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, you'll be anxious and you'll get anxiety, but that's just you. That's your mind. The lack of smoking didn't give you anxiety. It didn't make, you know, when you withdraw from heroin or alcohol, you actually can die, you know, if, if you detox too quickly. So they wean you off it. That's not the case with cannabis. Nobody's ever died from cannabis use alone ever. And especially no one's ever died from quitting cannabis alone. That would make no sense. That would be pretty fascinating, actually. Like if no one, anyway, don't want to get into that. But, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I'm just telling you what I have used every January, every year for the last 10 years. And not to mention, I took a month off when I was working in a dispensary. Now imagine that, people bringing in samples of product and doing all that stuff, blah, 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 giving you all this free stuff. How, how do you not consume? Well, what I did, I put it on my desk in a box and held it there 
until I was done and I had all that stuff to celebrate with at the end. And the irony is I only needed like two or three hits and I was back to high school high again. It's amazing. You'll know it's time for a break when you're smoking the normal amount you usually do and it's not doing anything or it's effects are wearing off quicker than normal. That's, that's depressing, right? You're like, oh no, it's time for a break. That's fine. Set up some projects to do what I'm about to do. Start a business, start writing another script and just get, just back moving again. So if you have any more questions, let me know, type them in the comments. I hope these five or six tips helped, but I promise you it's all mental. Find some ways that you can substitute for cannabis. Quick little recap. One, ask yourself why you're using it. Two, throw out all your paraphernalia. Three, work out, go to the gym. Four, substitute habits or pick up new ones. And five, stay positive and stay hydrated as much as you need to be. Blessings. I wish you a lot of luck. Let me know how it goes. I'm starting January 1, so I'm right there with you on quitting for at least the month of January, and I run a cannabis podcast, but that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So stay blessed.